It is Monday, November 6, 2023. This is another on the road edition of Baseball Today. That is my man, Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose, Maddie Mass, and producer Dan along for the ride as well, as we are officially on the road here in beautiful Jersey City, New Jersey. We're getting ready to take Blitzball Battle 4. We're super excited about it. And on our flight in, there was so much managerial news that happened on the flight. We were like, we're getting off the plane. We're going right to work. Like, literally everything that could have happened happened on our yes. flight. Luckily, we had some internet, so we saw it. We were able to draw up a game plan, and here we are ready to talk about it. I was like, I think we got to go do it. And you're like, absolutely. That's, That's why we're grinders. We love it. That's why we sit in first class, because this is what we do. I didn't sit. You sat in By first the way, class? it was hilarious. Every flight attendant loves this guy. They're like, so what, what do you do? Because he, he busts out his baseball mitt. He can't travel anywhere without it. So he's playing catch by himself. Guilty. Okay. <laughs> She's like, uh, what is that? Like a security glove with you? Like, is that good to make you feel better? No, like I used to play ball. I did not say that. Don't even make it sound like I said that. I used to play ball. I didn't say that. Really? Like professional ball? What happened. I did. Who'd you play for? Like minor leagues? No. Minnesota Twins, and I had to jump in, and the Oakland A's, and the Tampa Bay Rays, and the Philadelphia Phillies. Do you know facts, that he facts, has the facts, most career facts, homers but... against a position player? That's the way it was. Okay, fine. And then the, our amazing flight attendant wrote us each a very kind note. Malika. Uh, Malika, yes. Yeah. She was awesome. All right, so let's get to these three managerial moves. Uh, the last one obviously left the biggest impression. Craig Council makes the move. As he stays in the same division from Milwaukee, his hometown, he gets a five-year, $40 million deal to manage the Chicago Cubs, who at the beginning of Monday actually had a manager in place in David Ross. How shocked were you when we found out that that's the place he ended up? I mean, shocked, obviously, because it wasn't supposed to be open for a new manager to come in. So that wasn't even a place that we were thinking about Craig going to. He had interviewed with the Guardians. We knew the Brewers were trying to get him back. There were some other spots open. The Angels, the, the Mets. Mets was a huge one. Um, I like this, though. Like, it, it makes sense to me. I, I want big market teams to go out and just, like, go get their guy. Like, we just saw Texas do it, and they just won the World Series. So I want more teams to, to start thinking like that. So I, I, I like this move. Uh, clearly, he brings a ton of experience, um, you know, as a player, as a manager. He's had success. Um, he's worked in a great organization with the Brewers and under some really good people. He was the most sought after free agent manager and the Cubs went out and just grabbed him, even though they had a guy under contract for 2024. I think it's the way like clubs should act. If you want something, go and get it. And you know, now we got Craig council making $8 million a year as a manager. And you and I were crunching the numbers. You asked me to guess his career earnings on the plane. I was, I was around it. Yeah. He played 16 years. And he made just under $21 million as a player. He now signs a five-year deal for $40 bucks, which I think is great. Because to be honest with you, I think a lot of these managers have been taking the shit of front offices for a lot of these decisions. Now, how that's going to go down in Chicago, I don't exactly know. I can't imagine he's going to be sitting there and Carter Hawkins is going to hand him a lineup every day and be like, here, here's who you play and here's what you do. Why don't you think that's going to happen? Because I don't think that Craig Council, I, my That's guess That's what happens. Is, That's what happens. I, I don't think it happens that way with every manager. You think Bruce Bochy gets handed a lineup card every day by Chris I Young? I think it's very close to that, yes. I don't think so. I think, hey, here's the idea of the lineup that we want out there. What do you think? And then you just say, well, I maybe this, this. And like, no, okay. let's just go with what we gave you. All right, well, that, that's possible, but that's neither here nor there. Okay. The point is, is that he leave. This isn't somebody leaving the Yankees to take the Red Sox job. It's not somebody leaving San Francisco to take over a job in L.A. I mean, it's close. What but do you mean? it is the next half level down, in my opinion. Particularly with all the success that Council has had, what a gut punch for all those fans in Milwaukee. You lose your head of baseball ops, right? You lose your very trusted manager that everyone loves there and that's re is widely respected around the game. Yeah. You got some impending free agents, a lot of uh, stuff up in the air with Milwaukee right now, for sure. Okay. What about how bad do you feel for David Ross? Oh, well, I don't know how the situation went down. Like, I don't know if he knew at all this was coming. If it was, if he's blindsided by it, then I feel bad for him because you're, 
you didn't get what you wanted this year. You had a, a good run, but it didn't end up the way you wanted. You think, okay, well, that's a good stepping stone for 2024. I'm still under contract plus a team option year in 2025. You have your whole life in front of you right there. I mean, the next couple of years at least, and all of a sudden it's gone. Now he still gets paid, I assume, for 2024. So you can think about it that way. He gets to go on vacation if he wants and earn all his money. That's nice. But he wanted to be a manager. He was a manager, and I think he's a pretty good one. I think the Cubs were just – the way I read it, it's not about Ross not being good at his job. It's about bringing in someone who you think is probably the best at their job to do the same one. So basically hit the rewind button to the 2015 season where the Cubs did this nine years ago where Rick Renteria was their manager, and they were like, wait, Joe Madden's available? Yeah. So this is exactly a repeat of that performance. And then what happened? They went on a massive run over the next four years, including yeah. breaking a 108-year curse. It wasn't Joe. Joe Madden didn't do that, but no, he was but part I mean, of it. He's a part of the equation. Yes. He's, a, yes. he's a part of the equation. There's no question about it. Do I feel terribly for Rossi? I do. I do. Now, this team, which made significant improvements last season through the free agent market, you know, giving almost $200 million to Dansby Swanson, yep. giving around 70 to Jamison Tyone, uh, taking a shot at Cody Bellinger, and he put up top 10 MVP numbers and now is going to get paid in the offseason. I think they'll continue to do that. In fact, my guess is that when Council sat down and he said, you made some significant improvements. Like, you were a team that we had to worry about there in the National League Central. Are you planning on continuing that? Whether that means make a serious bid for Shohei Otani, a Blake Snell, or go some other direction. I imagine they said, yes, that's what we plan on doing. We've talked about the Cubs a lot on our program. They should be going after every single yes. big-name free agent target. Look at what they've done around Wrigleyville uh, with their new sports book, all these things that are happening. I mean, that has to be put back into the team. That is, that is your baseball income. Yep. So they started with the manager. Let's hope they continue with players and everything else. Um, part of the reason maybe the Cubs moved on from David Ross is the fact that they were in this thing until September, and I think, if my rough math is correct, they went 6-15 and 15 over the last 21, including losing a couple of huge series to the eventual National League champion Arizona Diamondbacks when the Cubs were still very much in this thing. And remember, they ended up getting blasted by the Pittsburgh Pirates at a time where Ross comes out and says, there's no way that we should be losing to that team. Yes, uh, you know, I don't think the expectation was World Series or bust this year, but, you know, as the season started going and we saw kind of what Bellinger was doing and some of the guys were having good years there, the expectations started to rise as they should, and then they fell flat. I, again, I, I, I don't know how they exactly feel in that front office of Chicago about Ross's tenure, right? Uh, but I know that it's more so about going out and getting great counsel. Yeah, I would agree with that as well. We all thought that if Craig Council were to leave his hometown, a, a team that his dad worked for, that there's that great picture of the 1982 American League champion Milwaukee Brewers, and yes, back in 1982 they were in the American League, yes. of him sitting between a couple of Brewers players. If he were to leave that situation, we all thought he was going to be ending up in New York with the New York Mets. That does not happen. Instead, they have hired New York Yankees bench coach for the last four years, Carlos Mendoza. Just 43 years old, 13-year minor league career. But we just basically started to find out about his name because he started interviewing for jobs. How bummed do you think Mets fans are today? I mean, I don't think they should be bummed at all. They have a nice core there. They have the, you know, the owner of all owners that you want on your squad right now, the, the richest guy that's willing to spend money. I know he's taking some of those, uh, you know, some of that gun slinging back a little bit. He's putting the guns back in the holster after uh, a year that they had this year. Uh, but we talked about what's the best opening uh, for managers, and I, and I think it's the Mets, no doubt about it, just because of that. The core that you have, an owner that's willing to spend because he wants to win in this city – um, I don't think Mets fans should be disappointed. I, 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 you've got David Stearns to head up your baseball ops. So you're going to be making what we think is smart, thoughtful decisions with your roster. And then a manager, we've talked about this so many times in the show, like you just have to be a good people's person. And one of the, one of the things that I would have if I'm running a team, like one of the prerequisites for my manager would be you have to speak Spanish. I don't care. Like I just think it's that important in today's game. So I think, you know, Mendoza coming over, being able to do that. You know, if there was any doubt, like if, say there was two people 
going for a, the same managerial job. Same qualifications. We thought they'd do the same job, but one spoke Spanish and English, and one only spoke English. I'm taking the guy that is uh, bilingual mm -hmm. every single time because I think it's important as a manager to have real relationships with your players, and it's hard to do that if there's a language barrier. Even if there is you know, a, a loose understanding of a language and you can have a, a, a surface conversation in Spanish, you're not going to be able to get deep. So, I mean, I, I know I'm kind of harping on this, and maybe it doesn't make a ton of difference, but to me it does. Like I've seen – how Latin ball players interact with coaches that can speak Spanish to them. It's a different type of game. So I, I think this is good. It's not the only reason he got hired, obviously. I like the fact that uh, Mendoza has been uh, a minor league manager. He's been a roving instructor. He's been a bench coach. He's done all the jobs. He's come up through the ranks. So you, you understand all sorts of struggle and all sorts of all parts of the game. It's not just one from player to you know, whatever, like he's done it all. And I think that's important. I think that you really start to understand the game and then you really start to understand personalities and all the different types of players you're going to manage. I, I, I think it's a great hire and I don't think Mets fans should be disappointed that they didn't get counsel. I think you should be happy you got this guy. I do think they will be disappointed. If you get rid of a guy like Buck Showalter with all of his accolades, even though Buck didn't have the greatest year in part because his players didn't have the greatest years either, you do it to get a guy with some panache, with some cachet behind his name. You don't get a first-time manager who most baseball fans had not heard of until a week ago. I'm just saying that that's So how is it I... Craig Council or Buss? Because who else is there that you'd be like, Mets fans are stoked they got this yes. guy. I think it's just Council, right? Yes, it was Council or Buss. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that I don't think that Carlos Mendoza can't be a good manager. I think he can be. I think he's got a shot. But if you're a Mets fan, you have PTSD from the Luis Rojas hiring. A guy who was a lifelong, you know, guy in the Mets organization who was a manager there who had managed a bunch of the guys who grew up to be stars on the New York Mets. And I thought it was going to be a home run. And it wasn't. And it lasted two seasons and it didn't work out at all. And so that's that's what you're thinking a, a little bit about. Plus, the last five guys that have been named manager of the New York Mets, nobody has made it more than two seasons. It ain't good. Right? It ain't good. Buck, Rojas... Beltron didn't even manage a freaking game. Whoops. And Callaway, sorry, so it's the previous four, right? Yes. And before that, Terry Collins got him to the World Series. So that's what you're looking at. Once again, that doesn't mean that Mendoza cannot succeed here in New York. I hope he does. I think the sport is better when the Mets are spending goo gobs of money, that they're bringing in fun, big-time personalities that are great baseball players, and to have the Mets on one side of town and the Yankees on the other side of town, that's good for the sport. So I am rooting for him to do well. But if you ask 100 Mets fans today what they think about the hiring, you would be hard-pressed to probably find 10 to 15 who are like, yes! Yeah, they might not be pumping their fist right now, but I think over time they'll be like, okay, I understand it. This guy's I'm been in the today. the guy's been in the market already. I think that's important. Like Councils hasn't managed or or been a coach in the New York market. He hasn't. That's a bit hold what, on. What the difference between managing in Milwaukee and managing in New York is light it's a it's crazy different. So what's the difference between managing in Milwaukee and being a bench coach in New York? At least you're in at least you see and you've talked every single no day to a guy that's been dealing with it. It's it's I think I think that means something, Chris. I don't think so. Okay. I, I just don't agree to disagree, bro. We can. We're still friends. Yeah. All right, so I traveled. Uh we packed light this trip. Yeah. If there was one thing I wish I could have packed, it was my miracle made sheets. Oh, it's that nice. simple. They're inspired by NASA. You've heard me talk a lot on this show about I'm not a great sleeper. And you're sweaty, too. So what? Don't laugh at him, Maddie. Don't do that. He's sweaty, people. And I these am sweaty. sheets, I know. silver we and saw, fused we sheets. We floor ball, too. They we stay take cool. We in the middle of August. And they're, they're uh, antimicrobial because of the silver. Very good. These sheets, they are, I can't even say this. What is that word? Thermoregulating. They are thermoregulating. Yeah, for people that sweat a lot like you. Oh, my God. And they're designed to keep you at the perfect temperature. See, I love all this yeah. stuff. They're also self-cleaning. It prevents up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, which clogs your pores, allowing them to stay cleaner and fresh, which mm. means that you will sleep better each and every night. So we want you to go to trymiracle.com slash today. Try it today or for a gift for somebody special this holiday season. And... We got a special deal. 
for our listeners. You save over 40%. And if you use our promo code today at checkout, you're going to get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you get a full refund. So upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash today. Use that code today to claim your free three-piece three towel set and Ooh. save over 40%. Once again, that is trymiracle.com slash today. All right, the managerial carousel started spinning early on Monday with former Major League All-Star Stephen Vogt getting the crack to replace future Hall of Famer Terry Francona with my Cleveland Guardians, and I cannot tell you how pumped I am. Now, at this time last year, he had just retired yep. as a Major League catcher. A year later, after one year on a Major League staff, he's taking over the Guardians, who year in and year out pretty much make a playoff push. Any trepidation because of that? For me? No, no chance. I mean, I know I know Steven very well, as do you. I yep. know you're jumping for joy. There's probably yes. nobody happier about this than you, maybe Steven's family. Yes, they are. Um, no, I have no trepidation because... This has been in the works for a, a lot longer than one year, in my opinion. I mean, as a player, I know from having conversations with him, this is what he wanted to do. He's been focusing on this. He's been talking to Bob Melvin since his A's days about what it takes to be a manager. What can I do? How can I learn? And places a catcher. Helps. Catchers. I mean, being able to handle a pitching staff is so important. You're, 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 I told someone this the other day. Someone was like, what's the quarterback position in baseball? And they're like, it's starting pitching? I said, no, I don't think so. I think because starting pitchers only have to pitch one out of every five days, they can't be the quarterback. Now, do you you can't win without starting pitching. You can't win without a quarterback. But I think more so than a starting pitcher, I think the catcher is the quarterback of the team. Was it Stafford who asked you that? He was there, but it wasn't him. Sorry, my bad. Okay, um, Game dropper. You just dropped it, not me. Anyways, so I think the catcher is, is such an important piece of the baseball team is essentially another coach on a team. So Steven's been doing this for so long. His story is awesome. He understands so many different facets of the game. He was a good hitter, a great uh, pitch caller, great w working with the staff, one of the best teammates I ever had. So is it quick from going from playing to managing? Yes, 100%. But an organization like the Guardians, who I think are very if, – if there is a team out there that understands the importance of a manager, it's the Guardians. You know, He's stepping in, f filling in for Terry Francona and how good he's been. So they know that it's an important gig, and they still went out and gave it to Steven. I think that speaks volumes about the kind of person he is, the kind of interview that he had. Mm -hmm. I, just from knowing him, I know he went in there and was just straight up honest with them and emotional about it because he's wanted this for so long, and they felt that energy. Just from talking to him about it, and you've done it before on your show, you can feel the energy. He wants this job, and I think that's, that's very important because this isn't just, hey, you manage 162 games. Like, being a manager is full year-round. You're not recruiting like you are in college, but you're an ambassador for the team. You're the face of the team. You have to talk to media all the time. You have to check in on your players. There's so many things that go into it. Steven's ready for this. I think Cleveland is perfect. Like, you know, what do you, what does your team do better than anybody else is develop pitching and, yeah. and, and have guys in their farm system that can pitch? Steven's going to be able to elevate that even more, which is kind of scary for the AL Central and my twins, but... Uh, no trepidation. I'm stoked for him. I think it's a great hire. In fact, I believe I'm probably most happy with this one. Of all the stuff that we got today, I think this one works out the best. You're, mo you're most confident in it? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's not even 40 years old, and I I've known Steven since, you know, for the last decade, and people remember the legendary interview he gave in the referee's outfit yes. when he joined uh, Johnny Gomes. And, and had us all rolling on intentional talk. That's the first time I met him. We became friends. Uh, we correspond a bunch throughout the year. And I had him on for the first, on the Rose Rotation for the first time when he was an Arizona Diamondback. So it was a 2021 season. And I asked him the question, I don't wish this on any manager, but let's say that somebody lost their job tomorrow. Would you want the job? And he was like, no, I love playing baseball too much. I said, okay, I respect that. We went over some things about how he had been paying attention as a player. I said, do you, when you're not playing on a given day, are you watching it through a manager's lens? 
And he said, yeah, I, I try to do that. I've had some amazing, amazing guys that he played for. If you look at the list of yeah. guys that he ended up playing for, right, whether it's Melvin, Tory Lovello, Madden. Craig Council, Joe Madden, like a bunch of really, really successful managers, he's been able to listen, talk, and he will utilize that. Am I, as a Cleveland Guardians fan, willing to go through the growing pains of having a guy that's only been a, a coach for one year at the major league level? I am, because I think he brings so much more to the table. One of the great things about Tito Francona, and the thing he did best, was communicate with his players. And I think that Steven has that trait, because it sounds easy, but not everybody has that ability. Yeah. Really, there's so much shit flying around their head, and they're worried about their jobs and everything else that sometimes you forget that the game is about the players. Terry Francona made that point umpteen times as he was getting ready to retire, and he didn't want a retirement ceremony because he said, "This is to, I owe it to the players to make sure that that's what the story is about. And I think Steven's exactly the same way. He's already got the media thing down. That's an important part. You have to do it pregame. You have to do it postgame every day. He's going to be fine with that. And everything else, I'm okay with him learning and learning from his mistakes. But voter... I am going to be texting you about those pitching moves you do sometimes. <laughs> Just know that. No, Just, I th yeah, he he he's so good for this role, and I don't even know what growing pains like. What what, what do you think he's going to have? Uh, well, I mean, they always say that the game speeds up on you okay. when you're in that chair, and so sometimes he might end up give one you know, of these. Oh, I mean, uh, uh, oh no, uh, but managing a bullpen, right? That can become cumbersome in today's game. He was just the bullpen coach, and he's been a catcher. I think this guy is going to succeed. I think we're talking right now, uh, Monday, November 6th, yep. 2023. Yes. Like, let's go back to this in three years and see if uh, Stephen Vogt is one manager of the year or just he's he's going to do fine, people. He's going to do great, and I'm so proud of him, and I'm happy yes. for him, and I'm happy for us as Cleveland Guardians fans. All right, let's move 276 miles down the I-71 highway in the Buckeye State. The big news was that Joey Votto, 17-year run in the Queen City is over. The team opted not to pick up his $20 million option, and certainly for Votto, no ill will. I just want to say thank you to all the Reds fans in Cincinnati and elsewhere. You know, I couldn't have loved and experienced more. And I'm so proud to have been able to play for a team, the oldest major league team, um, to have played for a team that just was endless gifts coming my way. All right, so I suppose the big question is, do you think that Vado will continue as a player? Oh, we talked about this a little bit on the plane ride. Uh, I think so. He's been pretty active on social media in the last couple of days, weeks, whatever it is. It seems like he still wants to go, and I know at the end of, this, uh, end of the year, it still looked like he had – something to offer on mm -hmm. a baseball field. This guy's had a historic career, a uh, Hall of Fame career, uh, some of the numbers, 920 OPS. He ends his career with a 409 OBP. I love that stat. Oh, you and just retired him, by the way. You're so right. <laughs> ends his Cincinnati Reds career with a 409 on base percentage. Uh, there's one logical place. You know exactly where everybody that's listening to this show, because you like baseball, you understand. Stand three. Yes. One, two, three. Toronto. Oh, God, Toronto. Oh. Right. No, they already have a they already have a guy and Ryan Noda that can get on base at a four hundred clip. So Sorry. no, it's Toronto. Makes sense. Uh, replacing Brandon Belt. Uh, he's a Canadian, obviously. So I think if he returns, I think that might be the only place that he goes. And let and unless unless there is a team out there like a Braves, mm -hmm. uh, like someone who's guaranteed to be in the. What the would he do with the Braves? I don't know. What would he do? I the don't Braves? know. But if he wants a would chance he, to win a World Series again, I understand. Like why, that's why what you have to do. You're a mercenary at this point, so you have to go where the good roster is. He doesn't have time to go and sit through a rebuild or something like that. So but, Toronto, obviously, they're they're in it still. They have their window is closing yes. quickly, but it's. It's yeah. still a window. There's still a window. There's no question so about it. So it's got to be somebody with an open window right now. Toronto makes sense, but one of those other teams like a Dodgers or a um, a Braves, that could make sense for me too. I mean, the Bra he's not going to go to the Braves. Probably not the Braves. It, Dodgers makes do? sense though. Dodgers what? makes sense. You okay. know it does. Dodgers, yeah. I mean, if they're looking for a left-handed DH that 
Yeah, I look mean, what they just did. Look what they just did with Jason Hayward. Yeah, but he Jason play Hayward little, he played some outfield. De- he could play some defense. He wasn't supposed to, but he did. I know, but he wasn't supposed to. I'm just Until saying. Yeah, I think that there's very few teams where it makes sense, and Toronto is one of them. If he goes to Atlanta, it's only to operate their TikTok, I think. But he would be great for that. He would be amazing. Come on, dude. Okay, so do you th- do you think he's done? Um, I think that if it's not Toronto, I do because it would be Toronto would be a really good ending. This is going to be one of those things where you're like 15 years down the road, we're going to be like, do you remember the one year that Joey Votto played in a different uniform? We're all going to be like, oh, God, really? Unless it's in his town and they end up doing something special. And then I will tell you this, because I think that Toronto's one of those teams. I like them. I dig them. I don't think everybody loves their energy. I think that if Joey Votto goes there, you'd have a lot of people that are like, okay, this is kind of cool. I want to see it happen. You a bad boy, Joey Votto? I'm in for that. He's not going to be a bad boy. Why not? Like they're, they're kind of bad no, boys up there. They aren't are, they? but I don't think that's his. Ooh, that's not his deal. Joey, get bad out. on us, man. Get so bad. now the question: First of all, I want to hear from Cincinnati Reds management as to how this whole thing went down. I mean, we look at this again as a like we don't have a spot for him play right now, and get we don't have at bats for him. Um, we need to get other players at bats, <clears throat> so that's where the decision was. So, so just to be clear, this. The financial aspect of this didn't come into play at the end of the day. No, did not. All right, so at least we appreciate his honesty that he didn't see any at bats for Joey Votto in 2024. So that part is good. Um, I am the one part about this that doesn't sit well with me is that they should have gone over this with Joey, and maybe they did. We haven't heard about it. They should have gone over it with Joey in August and said, listen, I know we're smack dab in the middle of this race still, but we're going to be honest with you. We don't see us picking up your option. We would like to celebrate you the proper way here in Cincinnati. That's how much you have meant to us. And I, we want you to focus on the task at hand, but it's important for us to understand, for you to understand how we feel about you. I think it was a messed up opportunity here or a missed opportunity. I don't know exactly when they were eliminated from the playoffs, but I know they were, you know, six, six and a half games back most of September. So they, their last home game was a week before the end of the season against Pittsburgh. He did get the standing ovation. By that point, you know, as an organization, what you're going to do. Right. With a guy like Joey Votto. So they probably were statistically eliminated at that point. There should have been, yes, I agree with you. I, I didn't at first. When you first brought this question to my attention, I'm like, what are, what are they supposed to do? They're still in the race and all these things. Uh, there should have been some quick Joey Gallo, uh, Joey Gallo, oh my God, Joey Votto giveaway at the park. Yeah, something shirts, like that. Something some like that. Some sort of big day. I agree. He's I agree. the best player they've had since Barry Larkin. He could have, he could have exited it though. We don't know yet. Right. And if that did happen, then I will take yeah. back everything I'm saying about the Cincinnati Reds. And there's a possibility we don't, we might not ever hear about that. And the Reds just kind of have to take that heat. So I'll take all of it back and apologize to the Cincinnati Reds front office if that option was put on the table. If it wasn't, then it was a missed opportunity. Okay. We'll leave yep. it at that. It's that simple. All right, today's episode of Baseball Today is sponsored by BetterHelp. Uh, Listen, it's tough out there. It is tough. The economy ain't great. Sometimes the world is moving too fast for you. Uh, Your job, your relationship isn't at uh, peak control for you. You need some help. That is okay. I think the number one thing in the world is admitting that you need some assistance getting through things. And so that's where therapy can actually lend a helping hand. So there is nothing better than better help. It is done not even face-to-face. It's done right here on your computers, on your phones, however you want to do it. It is that simple. You'll get matched up with a therapist out there, a licensed therapist, after filling out a brief questionnaire. And if there's not a great connection, that's okay. You can move on to the next therapist at no additional charge. I'm telling you this. uh, I have been in and out of therapy my entire life ever since I was a little kid. There wasn't one specific incident that drew me toward it. My parents always felt like it was good to discuss with somebody who was outside of the home everything that was going on in your life. I've always been a big believer in it. 
and I'm a big believer in better help. So we want you to visit betterhelp.com slash baseball today. You're going to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash baseball today. It's going to help you with your relationships, maybe with job, with anything else that you are facing. Okay, it shows tremendous strength if you raise your hand and say, I need some help, or in this case, better help. Uh, before we get out of here for the day, uh, once again, the name of the award, what is the players? Help me out here. I believe it's a player's choice. Yeah, player's choice. Outstanding My, Major League Baseball player. Thank you. And that is Ronald Acuna. Yes. I think he's, that's not the only award he's going to win. He beat out Shohei Otani. How surprised are you? Uh, I think there was a lot of talk around the league about, you know, what Acuna did this year, joining the 4070 club, which is just nuts. The 4040 club is nuts. Uh, 4050 club is, I don't think was ever done before. Nope. 4060 was never done. 4070. It's, it's just, I don't agree with it. I'll say that right now. I think Shohei, you know, deserved the award. He's doing things. I mean, you guys have heard me talk about Shohei before. I, I don't need to go into it again. I just think he's, He's on a different tier than everybody else, even a guy that just did 40-70 and did something that nobody has done before. I understand all that. So I'm not trying to take away from Ronald Acuna Jr. because he had an incredible year, and he's 25 years old, which is still crazy to think about. Uh, but I think Shohei is, again, on a different tier. But, you know, when you're getting votes by the players, I think being able to play the whole year and not, you know, end the year on the IL or, you know, I think – I think a lot of guys still value being on a winning team, even though we know that one or two guys can't make a whole team. But Ronald Acuna uh, hit 40 homers, drove in over 100 runs from the leadoff spot, played a great defense. Like He did a lot of things that in any other scenario, I would say this guy deserves the award, no doubt about it, not even close. Uh, but we have Shohei Otani right now. So I disagree with it, uh, but I don't think it's that far off, I guess. I respect the hell out of the players. I do. Okay. I always like it when they have to vote for things. I am concerned that Shohei fatigue has now started to work its way into Major League Clubhouse. We've been warning. We've been warning people. And I certainly hope that doesn't happen. I'm just warning you. Play players, don't be like some fans. Don't be like some media members and be like, oh, yeah, no. I mean, like, Be thankful. That we get to watch this. I'm bummed that he won't be able to pitch next year. I'm terribly sad. It's crushing me. Uh, I don't know how it's going to affect his free agency. All that sort of stuff. Don't don't lose that. Don't lose sight on the fact that this is a shooting star. There's no comparison in the history of sports in our time. We have it. The only thing that comes close, in my opinion, is Tiger Woods. That's it that I've seen personally. So don't get tired of it. And if you're getting tired of it. If you went and you voted at players on your ballot, and he said, oh, yeah, Shohei, yeah, he was really good. He was really good, but he didn't finish the year. Don't, please. <laughs> Can I read some stats? Quickly, and then we got to wrap it. 135 games. Um, he had 497 ABs. He still hit 44 homers, which led the American League. He 3-4-6'd he it for a 304, 412, 654 for a 1.066 that led all of baseball. He also went 10-5. and five on that abysmal team with a 3-1-4 ERA over 132 innings pitched, uh, 167 strikeouts. This guy's incredible. I'm He's sorry. He's incredible. Would have gotten my vote. Now, of course, I would never have made it into a major league clubhouse. It's true. That's for another time. Uh, we are super excited to be here in Jersey City for Blitzball Battle 4. We cannot wait. We're going to have another edition of Baseball Today that we will tape later on this week. Uh, shout out to both our producers today, Maddie Mass. Great job. Thanks for uh, working the ones and twos. Danny Rourke for putting this show together. For the uber-talented Trevor Plouffe, I am Chris Rose. We will see you later this week on Baseball Today.